Hello, so I don't have much actual chemistry in the works at the moment, so I thought I would make a video on perhaps the most emailed question to me, and that's where do I buy my acids from? Now, um, a lot of you will say, or just you can just buy them off the internet, but I'm not really that much of a fan of buying things off the internet um, in terms of home chemicals. And quite often with acids, the problem is because they're you know dangerous to handle and they've got shipping concerns and stuff like that, they're often quite expensive to ship if they're actually shipped at all. And there's usually a hazard goods charge on some of the more um, corrosive acids. This is obviously targeted, I'm, I'm Australian, if you haven't picked that up yet. Um, so this is obviously targeted at Australians. It'll be quite different in the US um, and overseas, but there will be some similarities. So we're going to start with the most available acids and we'll work our way up to the most unavailable acids that I own. Alright, so starting with some common organic acids. Um, this one's pretty obvious, but you can buy um, vinegar very cheaply. Um, it's cheap, it's not all that nasty, um, depending on what you're using it for. I mean, 5% you know, acetic acid doesn't find it much use in sort of um, synthesis, but um, it's good to have hanging around, you know, if you need to neutralize a base spill or something like that. What I've done in the past is I've um, gotten about, I think about 4 litres and um, converted it all to sodium acetate and then dehydrated the sodium acetate and then um, used sodium bisulfate with the um, anhydrous sodium acetate to make um, glacial acetic acid. I'll talk more about the, the sodium bisulfate in a sec, but um, um, I did have a bit more on this. I can't remember what I needed this for, but it's a pretty horrible sort of chemical. It smells very strongly. And that was a couple of years ago, and it's held up fine in this PET plastic. I don't know if I should move it to a glass container, but it seems to have held up fine. This is a toilet cleaner which I bought a few years back because I got excited because it contained um, formic acid 34.6 grams per litre um, but it was a waste of money. I mean this is a really thick blue sludgy substance that is really hard to get the... It's fucking everywhere. Um, it's really hard to get the formic acid out of um, and I've also had no use for formic acid in the past four years so a waste of money. This is citric acid. Um, I haven't really used this hardly ever. Um, it's commonly available and it's very cheap, but I really don't have much use for it. In fact, I have uh, approximately five kilos, I think, of it in this bag. Um, and it's been sitting on my floor for the past two years because I haven't had a single use for it. So if you have, a, if you have a, uh, an idea of a use for citric acid that maybe doesn't involve the uh, acronym HMT or D, then... Um, let me know. This here is oxalic acid. It's used as a rust remover from tiles and stuff. I bought it a couple years ago. The only use I've had for it so far is um, iron oxalate. I made a video on that a while back. Um, but it is actually more a common and somewhat useful chemical in um, chemistry situations. It does find a bit of use in some stuff. So um, it's not that expensive, so it's actually a pretty good buy. All right, now onto the, some of the mineral acids. This is hydrochloric acid, um, and in Australia at least, this is very nice. Um, it always comes concentrated and really cheap and really available. So every hardware store carries hydrochloric acid, not necessarily this brand, there's a couple of different brands, but I bought um, a different brand before and they've both been identical. Um, they're always a 32%. Um, you take the lid off for the first time and it fumes like crazy, it's actually disgusting. However, the one problem, and this is the case I think for for everywhere really, but um, definitely in Australia, they always have an iron contamination in them. The iron contamination doesn't always matter, um, depending on what you're doing. Quite often I just use this um, straight up because it, it's fine and a little bit of iron doesn't really hurt a lot of the reactions. But if it does, you can always distill it. So I have a video over on my second channel where I distill hydrochloric acid, so you can watch that. But um, it comes over to about 22%, I think that's the azeotrope, so it's not as concentrated as fully concentrated one, but it's got no iron contamination in it. Um, and I keep it in this sealed, somewhat sealed jar to prevent fumes. I keep this far away from the lab as possible. Um, and then I have some, um, yeah, 50% 50, 50 diluted, 32%, so 16% obviously, um, acid, which I keep on hand for, for some things. That way the fumes sort of keep down because the fumes are really wrecking everything in my lab. Um, I had a, like a, a radio in the lab that just broke because it just all rusted and um, so many metal things around the lab was just rusted and I contribute that all just to the, my careless storing of hydrochloric acid in the early days of the lab. 
All right, now onto the one that most people ask about, sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid comes over the counter as a drain cleaner. It's a very powerful drain cleaner, as you can imagine. Um, and it comes with two brands. One of them is called Moma MoFlow. Um, and this one, I've reused the bottle, so I've just taken the label off, is the Mineham Drain O Flush. So this one I found in a Stratco, um, and this one is in a home hardware. They're basically the only places I can find them. Um, Bunnings don't stock sulfuric acid, so yeah, Stratco and, and home hardware. Now the main advantages of these is that they're really quite concentrated. So this one is 1,800 grams per litre of sulfuric acid, which puts it at about 93%. Um, and this one is 1,835 grams per litre, which puts it at about 98% sulfuric acid. So they come pre-concentrated, which is actually very dangerous and I'm surprised they can sell it to general public. However, the drawback is they both have a lot of dye in them. This one is a sort of brownish color, and this one is like the full black. It's very disgusting. You can get rid of the dye, but um, you know it's a little bit complicated. The major setback is that these are very expensive. These are liter containers, both of them. Um, and at the time, this liter cost me $45, and this liter cost me $50. Australian, but I saw just recently, that was that was probably a year ago, maybe two years ago, I saw recently in Stratco that the price of a litre here, this bottle, has gone up to $65. So it's $65 a litre for sulfuric acid, which is very, very expensive. And a litre of concentrated sulfuric acid lasts you a very long time. I've still got quite a, uh, probably about a quarter of a bottle in here. Um, so it does last you a very long time if you conserve it. Obviously we are looking for ways to um, <laughs> get this cheaper. Actually, the first sulfuric acid I got was this. This is a battery electrolyte. I couldn't find sulfuric acid anywhere, and I'd been doing chemistry for a little while, um, and it was really starting to, to hinder me not having any sulfuric acid. I couldn't find any hardware stores. I couldn't buy it online just because, like, I was too young, and, you know, my parents didn't let me, and that sort of shit. Um, so I went into, I think it was Battery Well, and I just said to them, like, hey, I'm looking for sulfuric acid. Do you sell any? Because they obviously, they get the empty batteries and they fill it up with sulfuric acid and they said no we don't actually sell any but here just have <laughs> have some sulfuric acid for free because you look like a nice kid you probably won't get away with that unless you, you're a fat chubby teenager like i was and they're probably not even legally allowed to give this out but um this is roughly 33 percent um i ended up heating it on the hot plate just you know straight up heating it to obtain this um thick concentrated sulfuric acid with whole lot of crystals down the bottom so there's something in here it might be sodium sulfate or some something like that which crystallizes out um, and this is what I used to make my first manganese heptoxide video um, quite a while ago um, so I didn't distill this or anything I just heated it nowadays for sulfuric acid I use this um, I actually don't know where this came from I bought this off a friend um, who had a connection with I think it was a cleaning place but um, yeah, so the tip is just to ask around because it is such a common industrial chemical um, that, and it should be cheap. This actually ended up costing me, I think it was 14 or $17 for the, um, the five liters of 50%, which when you compare it to $50 a liter for the um, 98% is, is, is very good. A lot of places don't like selling it to individuals, so you've got to know someone, but um, it took me years and years. It took me five years, five, six years of looking for a cheap source of concentrated sulfuric acid before I found this. So from here, I um, distill over the sulfuric acid. I've got a video on my second channel about distilling over sulfuric acid. What comes over first is um, very dilute sulfuric acid, well, water first and then some dilute sulfuric acid, which I just chuck into this PET container. Um, and then at about 300 or so degrees, which is quite high, overcomes um, concentrated sulfuric, which I store in this glass container. Important to note that you can't store sulfuric acid in, uh, concentrated sulfuric acid in a PET container because it just breaks down the plastic. I've had that happen to me before. I don't know the actual company name, which is probably good because they probably don't want me shouting them out. A mineral acid I forgot to mention is um, phosphoric acid. I don't actually have any phosphoric acid, but I believe you can buy different grades of it at Bunnings. I don't know how good the quality is, someone will have to tell me in the comments if they've ever bought it before, but I've just had never had a use with phosphoric acid, but I know it is available, so. Now the other acid that everyone always asks me about is nitric acid. Now you can't buy nitric acid over the counter anywhere in Australia, that's... Most people distill over um, sulfuric acid, mixture of sulfuric acid and potassium nitrate or nitri any nitrate salt, and that um, 
distills over, over nitric acid. And depending on your concentration of um, sulfuric acid, you either get the, the 100%, the, the red or white fuming nitric acid, or the azeotropic 69%. My sulfuric acid is quite expensive or time consuming to make. Um, so what I use instead is this sodium bisulfate, um, which I use as a, as a substitute for sulfuric acid. What happens instead is you mix, uh, I think about 90 grams of this with roughly 55 or 50 so grams of um, potassium nitrate in the 500 ml flask. And then at about 300 degrees, it'll, it'll, um, this will protonate the, the nitrate and, and would still over 100% um, uh, nitric acid. So there's obviously that advantage of this. This is like, I think it cost me 11 or $13 for three kilos, and that's last me four years. So there's that, that real good advantage of it being hella cheaper. But the problem is the reaction is, is quite unfriendly in a way. It foams a lot, a lot more than just using straight concentrated sulfuric acid, because I've done that as well. But um, it foams heaps, so it needs heaps of babying because you need to like sit there and turn off and on the heat. And it uses heaps of nitrogen dioxide because it's distilling over the, the pot temperatures like 300 or so, um, which decomposes a lot of nitric acid. So what I do actually is I, is I bubble the nitrogen dioxide that comes out of my um, setup. I bubble that through water or um, hydrogen peroxide, make sure the water is really cold, and you've got to have a set back, um, suck back trap to prevent it. Um, but then I end up with this weak nitric acid, which is actually really useful around the lab for cleaning, for, for, for a lot of things. Out of that distillation, I get the, the weak nitric acid and the 100% um, nitric acid, which is, you know, quite unfriendly. It fumes a lot. Um, I can obviously do methods to get rid of all the um, nitrogen dioxide in the acid and get um, white fuming nitric acid as opposed to red fuming, but most of the time red fuming is just fine. And then this is 70% or the 69% nitric acid. Um, I haven't labelled the bottle yet is actually the old bottle from the sulfuric acid. So with that, I just use the 50% sulfuric and um, potassium nitrate and distill it over and then um, redistill it to get the, the azeotropic um, acid. You're on your own to find your nitrates. I've got a lifetime supply of nitrates, um, but you're on your own to find them. Once you've found them and you've got the sulfuric acid, you can, you're, you're no, you don't even need the sulfuric acid, you can just use the bisulfate and you're set up to um, just keep making nitric acid, assuming you've got the patience. I mean, I've, I've done this um, red fuming nitric acid stuff, distillation, um, probably 11 to 15 times over the years, and each time it takes me five hours or so um, from, you know, setting up to, to, to packing down and clean up. Um, so I've spent so many hours distilling over like tiny amounts so it's quite frustrating but now another acid that I don't have which you're gonna really struggle to find over the counter is hydrofluoric acid obviously um, it's very dangerous um, which is why I don't have any because I just won't fuck with <laughs> hydrofluoric acid um, also because there's no real reason for what I do I need you know fluorine at all but yeah you, you really can't buy and, and you're gonna struggle to buy it online really as well because because it's such a dangerous good you can of course make it, but I would not recommend it. All right, this might be actually now to think about it marginally easier to obtain than hydrofluoric acid, but um, this is perchloric acid. Now you cannot buy this as well because there's obviously security concerns. Perchlorates are restricted, um, sort of. Below 70%, perchloric acid has, has this terrible reputation of being like this horribly oxidizing and dangerous acid, but below 70% is pretty benign, although it is a very, very uh, strong acid, so it is. Um, very corrosive. Of course you have, you have to make it really. Um, so how I make it is um, you take a saturated solution of sodium perchlorate um, and then you add or bubble in hydrochloric acid, um, either aqueous or the gas, um, and that displaces uh, the, the, so the sodium ions because um, sodium chloride has a lot lower solubility than sodium perchlorate. So you end up with a solution of perchloric acid. And of course you end up with um, sodium chloride in the solution because it's you know reasonably soluble um, and um, you can't really get rid of all the traces of sodium perchlorate so it's quite an impure um, solution but um, it's what I use for um, a lot of my um, perchloric acid things because if your end product is insoluble anyway it's going to be really easy to remove the, the perchlorate and the, the chloride um, impurities but if you're if you're trying to make a soluble perchlorate out of it then you're going to end up with a lot of trouble because um, yeah got all this chloride in it. 
um, once again, you're on your own to find the chlorates. All right, I think that's everything. I've obviously missed like quite a few acids in my lab, like um, trichloro, isocyanuric acid, boric acid, and you know, picric acid, benzoic acid. Um, but you're not really ever using them as like acids in the sort of the sense that you use these as acids. Um, and so, you know, I thought they weren't really worth mentioning. Hopefully, this answers the questions that you guys have been emailing me. Um, you know, be safe. Um, all right, I'm rambling now. Yep. Um, Thank you, I'll see you around. Fuck, now I'm gonna have to put all this away, aren't I? Where's my cider? Oh, hopefully that was out of shot. Oh, fuck.